Jodie Lee Letkins was born on September 20th, 1970. Details about Jodie's early life are scarce, but reports suggest she faced a difficult upbringing and often ran away from home, ultimately becoming involved in a juvenile probation programme. Before turning 14, Jodie and her family relocated four times, eventually settling in North Prospect Avenue in Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City is a vibrant city located in the heart of the United States on the Missouri River. Kansas City is famous for its jazz heritage, barbecue cuisine and distinctive blend of Midwest charm and metropolitan flair. The city is home to numerous cultural institutions, such as the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art, the American Jazz Museum and the National World War I Museum and Memorial. Kansas City also boasts a lively sports scene, with teams like the Kansas City Chiefs and the Kansas City Royals calling it home. The downtown area is a hub of activity, offering a mix of entertainment districts, including the Power and Light District, as well as historic neighbourhoods like the River Market. Kansas City is also notable for its fountains, earning it the nickname City of Fountains. The city's diverse population and booming local economy, driven by industries like healthcare, transportation and technology, make it a dynamic and welcoming place to live and visit. By 1981, Jodie Ledkin's parents, Karen Stratton and Melvin Ledkins, had divorced and although her mother remarried, that marriage also ended in divorce. However, by 1985, it appeared that Jodie and her mother had reached a more stable point in their lives, with their relationship showing signs of improvement. Jodie maintained a close bond with both of her parents. Her father affectionately referred to her as, quote, pretty much a good little girl, while her mother, Karen, described Jodie as incredibly trusting and someone others often relied on for support. Jodie was also deeply fascinated by outer space and harboured a dream of becoming an astronaut. It was May 23rd, 1985. That evening, after an argument with her boyfriend and friends, Jodie walked to the home of her friend Melissa Fallscroft near East 14th Street and Winchester Avenue. At 10pm, she called her mother Karen asking for a ride back to their East Bottoms residence. Since Karen didn't have access to her car, Jodie mentioned she could get a ride from friends. When Jodie left Melissa's house, it was assumed she was heading to her boyfriend's place, near the 700 block of Cambridge Street, and was approximately a 14 minute walk away. She was last seen walking north on Winchester from 14th Street and was never heard from again. Jodie had no money or extra clothes with her when she vanished. At the time of her disappearance, Jodie was enrolled in a juvenile probation programme due to her history of truancy. After she went missing, her mother contacted Jodie's caseworker, the deputy juvenile officer speculated that Jodie could have been upset about something and recommended allowing her space over the weekend to calm down. The officer issued two warrants, classifying Jodie as a, quote, endangered juvenile who should be taken into police custody if found. However, these warrants did not include a missing person report, as her mother mistakenly believed. Law enforcement was only informed of her disappearance in 1987, two years after the fact, causing a delay in the investigation. By the time the police got involved, leads were scarce, though foul play was suspected. It was an agonising experience for Jodie's loved ones. Karen hung flyers around Kansas City and personally sought out and spoke with Jodie's friends and acquaintances. However, she yielded few results in the search for her daughter. 
Police interviewed Jodie's friends, however, like Karen, had unfortunately found no leads. Karen stated, quote, There's no reason for her to stay hidden all this time if she's alive. In my heart, she's alive. Three years after Jodie's disappearance, in 1989, Jodie's juvenile officer received a letter from someone claiming to be Jodie, assuring that she was safe but offering no explanation for her disappearance. When the handwriting was compared to an earlier letter Jodie had written, her mother Karen was unsure if it was a true match to her daughter's handwriting. In 1993, Karen began receiving strange and menacing phone calls from someone demanding money in exchange for Jodie's return. During one of these calls, the individual made a chilling statement, quote, If we don't get the money, your daughter will be sent to you in pieces. Karen continued to receive calls such as this for approximately two years. Fortunately, Karen recorded all of the threatening phone calls and reported them to the police. Investigators were able to create transcripts and trace the calls to a payphone in Kansas City, but the caller's identity was never uncovered. By August of that year, Jodie's case was reclassified as a probable homicide. In 1997, two prison inmates came forward, claiming to have information about Jodie's disappearance. Their tip led police to search the Mississippi River, suggesting that her killer had hidden her body in a car and submerged it in the river. However, the search yielded no results. Reports indicate that Karen currently resides in Arkansas, but makes periodic trips to Kansas City to continue searching for her daughter. She persists in retracing Jodie's movements, driving through former neighbourhoods and reviewing all the notes she has accumulated over the years. Despite her efforts, she still finds the situation puzzling. She stated, quote, They should tell me the truth. I call it deadly secrets. When part of your heart is dead, it's never going to rejuvenate. For them to not tell the truth and keep that secret to themselves, all they did is killed a part of my heart. She mentioned that Jodie's home environment in 1985 was troubled, with ongoing conflicts between her and her father, and speculates that Jodie may have left intentionally. She commented, quote, If I was detached and I just heard the story, I would say that little girl's gone. But no, I'm not going to say it. I hope she comes home, or at least calls me, and I know it's her. Investigators have entertained this theory as well, but believe that regardless of the reasons behind Jodie's departure, there was likely an incident that put her safety at risk. Detectives have remained dedicated to the case, collaborating with the National Centre for Missing and Exploited Children to create age-progressed images, showing what Jodie Lidkins would have looked like in 1998 at age 28 and later in 2014 at age 43. Jodie's father, Melvin, has since passed away, never knowing what happened to his daughter. Karen stated to Northeast News of those who spent time with Jodie on the last night she was seen, quote, These kids are old now, and they know something. It's time to finally come through with the truth. Her loved ones set up a website called Help Find Jodie Lee Ledkins, which has information regarding her disappearance, photos of Jodie and a touching passage written by her mother, who concluded by stating, quote, To heal is to bring my daughter home. Why hide? Why not just heal your own soul and be what God wants us to be? His children his children who gather the peace to a better world. We are brothers and sisters from the past to the present. We need to speak and we need to bring our sister Jodie home, my daughter Jodie home, and we need to bring the missing home. 
At the time Jodie vanished, she was 14 years old, of Caucasian descent, standing at 5 foot 1 and weighing approximately 90 pounds. She has long, straight blonde brown hair, has blue eyes and wears large square plastic framed glasses. She has what her family describes as perfect teeth, a small mole beneath her chin, a large birthmark under one arm and has an appendectomy scar. There is unfortunately no information about what she was wearing at the time of her disappearance. The case classed Jodie as an endangered missing person. However, in 1997, Kansas City Police reclassified the case to be a homicide. As of 2024, her case remains unsolved. If you have any information about Jodie Ledkins' disappearance, you can reach out to the Kansas City Police Department at 816-234-5140, Cold Case Missing Persons and Runaway Unit at 816-234-5136, or the TIPS Hotline at 816-474-TIPS-8477.